I, 19, have my younger sister, Kala, teen, living with me. Our dad and his wife had been married for four years. His wife had a very young daughter, Lacey. She's my stepsister. Her bio dad and family were never ever around. My dad and his wife passed away three months ago. Mine and Kala's mom passed away when we were younger. When CPS became involved because both were left orphans, I took my sister Kala. I was already working full time since I skipped college and I just about had what I needed to take care of my sister. They asked me about Lacey and I told them I just wanted to take my sister. Lacey was placed with her grandparents, my dad's in-laws. They became aware that Kala came to live with me and that I had been offered the chance to take their granddaughter and refused. Once they learned this, they asked me why and then pestered me about it for weeks. Finally, they told me they were older, that she could use as much family as possible and that she missed Kala. She wouldn't really remember me. I asked Kala if she wanted to see her and she said not really. So the reason I asked the question is I know from my sister that Lacey, dad's stepdaughter, was really fond of her, called her sister, loved her even though it was one-sided and I can imagine that this has been extra tough on Lacey because she lost so much. So I told them we were not interested in staying in their granddaughter's life. They told me she was our little sister and that my dad would have wanted us to stick together. I told them I didn't care what my dad wanted. They said not to punish a child for the sins of my parent. So I blocked them and continued on with things until they sought me out on social media via one of their older grandkids. They told me that I should be ashamed of myself and that their granddaughter deserves to be with her siblings and be raised by me since I'm young, fit and healthy and could run around after her like they can't and will be around a lot longer than them. I replied once that their granddaughter was not my responsibility and that I wanted them to leave my sister and me alone because we had no reason to be in touch ever again. That wasn't the end and they called me selfish and cruel a few times via another account. So I had to set my account to private to stop them. Am I the idiot? Edit. Making clear that Lacey was my dad's stepdaughter, not his daughter. Wait, what? You're 19 and looking after your teen sister and they wanted you to take care of their very young granddaughter too? Not the idiot. They need to figure out how to provide care for their granddaughter. You're already doing a great and kind job taking in your sister. Guilt tripping a 19 year old who lost his parents is beyond the pale. I feel super bad for little Lacey. She's an innocent little girl and she's lost both her parents. And from her perspective, her big sister too. But, and it's a massive but, that little girl is not related to you and she's not your or your sister's responsibility. If you take her in, it would impact your life and your sister's life greatly. It would be a lifelong responsibility to take on a little girl. Your sister is different. She's a blood relative and a teenager. She can look after herself to a certain extent and certainly doesn't need to be watched the same way a little kid would. Maybe one of the older grandkids could take her if they feel so strongly about this. Wouldn't it be in her best interest to be surrounded by real family? I get it, the grandparents are old, but your stepmom's family can step in way more and help the grandparents more if it's becoming too much on the grandparents instead of being childish making a Facebook post. I'm glad you blocked her grandparents. I wish you and your sister all the best. Agreed. So Opie and his sister are idiots for abandoning the poor little orphan girl when they've just lost their own dad as well and Opie's still a teenager? The girl's own grandparents saw an opportunity to harass a kid with no connection to them to take her in because they didn't want to anymore. Document everything. Every attempt at contact, every new social media account created, every person they've persuaded to reach out to you, every name they've called you every response you've sent telling them to stop. Literally everything and file for a protection or intervention order. They are harassing you and ignoring your request to leave you alone and they need to stop. My boyfriend, 24, and I, 22 male, went to the beach on the 25th of December. As it is common here, it was a sunny day so you could get a sunburn if you didn't take some self-care measures. Both my parents are dermatologists, so my siblings and I are very aware of the importance of protecting your skin from sunburn and having a proper skincare routine. My boyfriend, on the other hand, doesn't give a crap about his skin. No matter how much my parents have tried to convince him to wear sunscreen, he's never done it. When we got to the beach, I started putting on my sunscreen and he asked me to share some with him. But I refused to share since it wouldn't make sense to take care of your skin just once because he isn't doing it again. Plus, my sunscreen is the one I wear on a daily basis. 
it's meant to be personal. So he got mad at me. I told him to wear a hoodie so he could minimize sunburns, but he refused. Long story short, he got sunburnt. My boyfriend's skin was so red and felt hot to the touch and it was painful for him. He called me an idiot for not sharing with him. He said he hasn't forgiven me yet because it hurts and the sunburn hasn't faded. My dad has seen him to get sunburn relief. My dad calls me an idiot because sharing some with him does cost nothing. But my mom says that this is a lesson for my boyfriend since this is his own fault. My mom had gifted him sunscreen but he decided not to use it. Am I the idiot? I refuse to share since it wouldn't make sense to take care of your skin just once because he isn't doing it again. What the heck kind of logic is that? You can't be serious. You are the idiot. Why are you even dating? Makes no sense to treat someone you care for like this. Have some grace and kindness. With a partner like this, who needs enemies? You've been begging him to change and start using sunscreen. He finally makes an effort and asks for some, and you go on an eco trip and shut him down. What's worse, he got a really nasty burn. You basically injured your boyfriend to teach him a lesson. That's sadistic and messed up. This relationship won't survive. Good grief. Sunscreen is supposed to be personal. What an insane thing to say. Using the same sunscreen is too intimate. What the heck is OP doing with it? Most of us can apply sunscreen without contaminating or, in fact, even contacting the unused product, assuming we're not already in an intimate relationship with the person we're sharing with. OP was just punishing his boyfriend for not being subservient enough by physically hurting him. Wow, OP, you are the idiot. We hosted Christmas on Sunday and my husband's family is still fighting over this. Mother-in-law is a lot. She does whatever she wants, rules are for other people, not her, and she has never liked me. We just moved into a house with a lake behind it, and mother-in-law found a pair of ice skates at our house. I told her not to go on the ice, but her husband and my dad both told her that I didn't know what I was talking about, and she would be fine. Well, surprise, surprise, she fell through the ice. Thankfully, she wasn't deep at all and could easily get out. Her clothes were soaked and unwearable, so everyone just assumed I'd give her something, which was annoying, to be honest. She's never been very nice to me and my husband has clothes she can wear. I didn't want to give her anything expensive or anything I was attached to. I also didn't want to give her anything at all form-fitting because she's smaller than me and would love to gloat about how they were too big. I offered a pair of footy pyjamas with a bunny tail, warm, meant to be baggy, and I only bought them for Halloween and wouldn't be upset if she lost or ruined them. Mother-in-law refused and demanded I let her go through my drawer. I told her that it was the pyjamas or she could put her wet clothes back on. At this point, she still refused and a few other family members began berating me and saying I was being extremely cruel. I'm possessive of my clothes and it's such a personal thing to me. Finally, mother-in-law said she would go home in wet clothes, which was ridiculous. It was freezing out and she weighs maybe 110 pounds and struggles to stay warm anyway. Her husband ended up having a pair of sweats in his car and his sister gave her a bathrobe she'd gone for Christmas. Mother-in-law refused to speak to my husband or me for the rest of the night and multiple people called me an evil witch. Mother-in-law's mom and sister won't even talk to me. My husband says I was really cruel and he gets that she isn't easy to deal with, but he's ashamed of how I behaved. Not the idiot. She demanded to search your drawers. I mean, they're your clothes. I wouldn't let anyone go through my clothes the same size as me or not. That's mine. You warned her and she messed around and found out. If she kept her butt off the ice like you told her, this never would have happened. Opie also told them no, on her property. Like, mom, be lucky you weren't left in the wet clothes. Take the fuzzy bunny suit and deal with it. As my five-year-old says, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. No idea where she learned it. I have not, nor had my husband ever said it. It's a typical case of beggars can't be choosers. Despite everything else, OP offered clothes, but mother-in-law refused. So, yeah. Everyone's the idiot here. Yes, your mother-in-law is clearly an idiot in various ways, but there was really nothing else you could have offered her to wear. The optics of offering her a bunny suit and nothing else is pretty bad. I can understand limiting her choices, but I can also understand how your offer looked like a blatant attempt to humiliate her. So why didn't you offer her one of your husband's clothes? When that was brought up, she first yelled about not wanting men's clothes. Her mom raised her and her sister to know that their only worth is being beautiful and marrying wealthy men. 
Her mom is also a former model who hates that her mother-in-law is prettier than her and loves that her mother-in-law is way too short to be a model. So, no way was she putting on bunny pyjamas in front of her mom and sister. Oh, so you were doing it to intentionally embarrass her. Got it. You are the idiot for offering her an embarrassing bunny rabbit Halloween costume or nothing. Come on, you were trying to embarrass her and you get 10 bonus idiot points for acting like you weren't. Yes, it sucks that she isn't nice to you, but she's in need and it's a temporary situation. You couldn't spare some track pants and a sweatshirt. She had to wear her husband's pants and a bathrobe. Seriously? You suck the most. My husband and I recently went on a long overdue vacation to a tropical island. We stayed at an all-inclusive resort, but we also wanted to get out and explore the island. So, we decided that each of us could pick an activity to get off the resort for a day. I picked a hike that would bring us up into the island's mountainous interior and through some rainforests. My husband isn't a big hiker, but he agreed to do it with me. My husband narrowed his choices to two options, a catamaran trip to snorkel and go dune buggy riding. I get horrible motion sickness. We had some mild turbulence on our flight to the island, and even with the Dramamine I took before we took off, I still got nauseous and lightheaded. I told my husband that both of the ideas he picked were things I knew would make me motion sick. He told me that it probably wouldn't be that bad, but I told him that I knew my body and I knew without a doubt that both of those activities would make me sick. I asked him if there were any other activities that he was interested in, but he said those two were the only ones that piqued his interest. He eventually agreed to go on the hiking trip first, and then we could figure out the activity he wanted to do. While on our hike, we started talking with another couple also staying at our resort. They'd been there a couple of times, and my husband asked if they'd done either of the activities he wanted. They'd done both and said they were both a lot of fun. But the wife said that the catamaran trip was rough at times, and a couple of people on their trip got seasick. She also said that the dune buggy was fun because you get to drive it yourself, but it's mostly on dirt tracks that can get pretty bumpy. From the way she described it, I knew that if I did either of those things, I would get sick. When we got back from the hike, I told my husband that I didn't want to do either of the activities he wanted to do, and asked again if he could please pick something else for us to do. He said those were the only two things he liked, and if I don't want to do them, we won't because he doesn't want to go alone. I knew he was upset because he was really excited about the things he wanted to do, and after I told him I wouldn't do them, his demeanour definitely changed. I wouldn't say he was sulking, but he was definitely less animated and not his usual fun self. He spent the rest of our trip just sitting around the pool doing nothing. I tried to get him to do things with me, like get a massage, but he told me to go do that myself. When he didn't change his attitude, I finally asked him what was up and he told me that he'd gone outside of his comfort zone to go on a hike with me, but I wouldn't do the same for him. I told him that hiking doesn't make him sick, so that's a big difference, but he told me I could have at least tried one of them. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. You could have tried the dune buggy with him and stopped if it was a problem, at which time he might have been happy continuing on his own, or driven your own behind him and gone slower. You didn't even try. You are wrong for expecting your husband to do an activity he didn't want to do while fully knowing that you would never agree to do the activities he wanted to do. That's not being a good partner. Disagree. You aren't supposed to drive when you take this medication. It's very sedating and the box literally tells you not to. Not the idiot. I 100% understand you're not wanting to risk motion sickness on your vacation, and I think your husband is an idiot for expecting you to just try it when you're getting nauseated on airplane rides. You were transparent that you didn't want to do those things for a legitimate reason. I also understand feeling disappointment that he put a damper on things when he didn't get to do what he wanted. Everyone's the idiot here. Her feelings and nausea are valid. I wouldn't want to do something my partner would be uncomfortable doing, but Opie even said that they didn't research the activities at the resort before going. They went in blind. They're not working as a team. They never should have had a rigid, I pick, then you pick. It should have been a collaborative effort from picking the vacation to the activities, so they could both have fun. I, 24 female, was recently asked out by a guy, 27, I met at a friend's birthday party. I was definitely interested, so I gave it a shot. He planned the first date. He chose to take me to a luxurious restaurant. Unfortunately, there was no chemistry, so I had already mentally checked out halfway through the date. At the end, he paid the bill. He said he was happy to treat me. Fast forward to the next day, we texted a bit, and I let him know that I was no longer interested. He throws a temper tantrum and immediately asks for the money back. 
I say no and block him. I've discussed this with our mutual friend and she's horrified. She said he's totally the idiot and planning on cutting him off from the group. She's basically his only connection to the friend circle. On the other hand, another female friend said I should have paid for my share instead of setting unrealistic expectations. Meanwhile, he started texting me from a different number and calling me all sorts of names. So, am I the idiot for not splitting the bill once I knew I wasn't interested anymore? Not the idiot. He asked you out. He chose the expensive restaurant. None of that was contingent on you guys having chemistry or a second date. First dates serve the purpose of seeing if there's chemistry. Sounds like you dodged a bullet anyways. What a nut job. One day and he's already displaying some troubling and stalkerish behaviours. Name calling and calling from other numbers definitely crosses a line. Unrealistic expectations? What expectations? He invited you out. He said he wanted to treat you. The dude is just a sore loser. In no way is buying a woman dinner equivalent to a ticket for more. You weren't going to, nor expected to, pay your share when you thought you might be interested. So why would not being interested change anything? That factor is literally irrelevant. And the fact that he's harassing you from different phone numbers now, etc., only goes to show that your instincts about him were spot on. What a gentleman. Oh, for the love of dog, I see why that dude is single. Hope marinara was on the menu because the red flag was hoisted high. My thoughts on paying for dates is, whoever does the asking and planning is the one who pays, especially if they say, my treat. There's never a guarantee that the person you're taking out will want a relationship with you, so it's a risk you take. 